What's up guys, it's Brian Olds with NeverSay.com and I am standing at the whiteboard, which means we're gonna be talking about programming, so settle in. So a few videos ago, I talked to you guys about my 23 year journey with the weights and how much of that had to do with linear progression and I got a ton of emails and direct messages where you guys wanted me to expand upon that and explain exactly what I did. So I thought I'd take an entire video and show you how I set up linear progression. Now linear progression has kind of gotten a bad reputation over the past couple years because a lot of people like to make things more complicated than they actually need to be. A lot of people will tell you that linear progression is only good for beginners and intermediate lifters and I would tend to agree, but I set it up a little bit of a different type of way so hopefully even you advanced guys will get a couple ideas for your own training so you can become big and strong, not like me. The way I'm gonna lay this out for you guys is gonna cover a three month span and even though these days I do more conjugate and rotated percentages and a lot of strongman stuff, I take at least three months out of the year and train exactly like this because number one, I love it. and Number two, it works for me. Maybe it'll work for you. Anyway guys, let's get after it. This is how I set up my linear programming. Let's go. So when I set up my linear progression, here are a couple principles that I stick to. I'm not saying this is the only way. This is just how I do it. There are thousands and thousands of ways to set up linear progression and a lot of very reputable coaches who do it differently, but this is what's worked for me in the past. You guys ask questions, I'm giving answers. They may not be the right answers, but I'm giving you answers. The first thing is I've always set up my linear progression in giant set style. Now you guys know that I do all of my strength work with giant sets. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, I get twice as much done in the gym in the same amount of time and time is something that I do not have a lot of. And number two, it builds my conditioning while I'm doing my strength. I know a lot of people say that you cannot get bigger and stronger while dropping body fat. You can. It just requires extremely hard work and most people will avoid that like the plague. The second thing is that we're gonna stick an antagonistic muscle mover before our main movement for the day. So if you're gonna be doing a bench press, you'll be doing bent over rows prior to your bench press. A lot of people will tell you that they're afraid of getting worn out prior to their actual bench and it will affect them negatively, but there's a lot of studies that show that this will actually help you. And to be completely honest, it has never hurt me. It has only benefited me, so you should give it a try. Third thing is ramping weights. Now we're gonna get into the reps and sets a little bit later on, but know that all of my sets are always ramping. So if I'm doing five sets of five, my first set might be at 100 pounds, Second set might be a 105, then 110, then 115. I'm trying to work up to a top set for the day and never be afraid if you hit that top set a little bit early and you know that you're topped out for the day, that you can back off a little bit. That allows a little bit of self-regulation, which is always nice in your programs. Now for today's program, we're gonna go four days a week because that's what I like to do and I have the microphone so you have to listen to everything I say. Those four days are gonna be based off your deadlift, your bench, your squat, and your overhead press, the main four strength movements. If those go up, everything goes up. Basic exercises build basic mass and basic strength. Don't overcomplicate this. The beauty of this program is in its simplicity. Don't screw this up. Come on, man. Like I said before, this program is gonna cover a three month span, so your assistance exercises may change. Your reps and sets are absolutely gonna change, but the same basic template for every single workout is gonna remain the same. You just need to plug in the different exercises and the different reps and sets. So, the very first part of your workout for the day, your session is going to have a main giant set, and you're gonna get through all your reps and sets. After you've done that, you're gonna move on to a secondary giant set. Everything's gonna be tiered, and then after that, you're gonna move down to your assistance giant set. When I say tiered, you're gonna stick your most important, your main mover in your giant set. Then your secondary giant set is going to be based off of weak points and exercise that closely mimic your main mover, but again, they hit your weak point. The whole point of this is to make this go up. And then your assistant giant set is going to be all those little small muscle groups that you really don't feel like hitting. Weight won't matter nearly as much the important thing is that you're just burning it out, hitting those little exercises, exercise muscles. You're gonna be hitting those small muscles, kind of like your triceps that are gonna make your bench press go up. That's all gonna fall in the assistant giant set. So now that you guys have a couple basic principles that we're gonna follow, I'm gonna lay out each day for you. Hopefully it doesn't get too tedious. We're just gonna roll through. Let's go. All right, so your first day is gonna be deadlift. Whatever is most important to you, stick on your first day because deadlift is my worst lift. It's on my day one. 
On my previous program videos or even my workout videos where I talk about the giant set format with the antagonistic muscle groups, the question always gets asked. What is the antagonistic movement for a deadlift? A live lifts. Come on, man, that was a Halloween joke. Don't pretend you didn't laugh. Anyway, so what I like to do as the antagonistic muscle mover for my deadlift is an explosive hinge, something that's gonna get my hips moving as fast as possible. For me, typically this is some sort of kettlebell swing, kettlebell snatch, keg throw, maybe some sort of jumping. Uh, yeah, so I throw in the explosive hinge directly into my deadlift, directly into an ab variation. Now, a lot of people do not believe that core work, direct core work will actually help you, but I think it does. I don't perform nearly as well if I am not doing direct core work. And plus, it builds in extra rest. I don't know what level you're at, but I don't think a set of 10 sit-ups is really gonna take that much from you. On your giant set, you're going 1A directly into 1B, directly into 1C, and then you're taking your rest. I usually take the time, that 90 seconds, to write down in my logbook exactly what I did, as well as change any weight on the bar just to manipulate it, whether I need to go up or I need to go down, because again, we're doing ramping sets. If you're doing the giant sets the way that I intend, and again, this is my opinion, no one else's, this should not take you any more than 30 minutes. If it is taking you more than 30 minutes, you're dogging something, and you're probably not working as hard as you should be. But as soon as you are done this, you move on to your secondary giant set, and again, we're tiering exercises. So this entire workout is built around the deadlift. Now, a weak point for the deadlift, for me personally, is my hamstrings, so I threw in stiff-legged deadlifts. Your second tier exercises, or your secondary giant set, again, being lazy, they should all closely mimic your first exercise, your main move of the day, as well as hit those weak points. So, theoretically, if my stiff-legged deadlift goes up, then my deadlift will go up, or at least that's what I'm thinking, in theory. Hopefully. Anyway, so I'm gonna go to an explosive hinge here. Now, if I did kettlebell swings up here, I may do something like kettlebell snatches, or keg throws, or dimmel deadlifts, or something like that on this second one. I would typically switch these up. Then I go to stiff-legged deadlift and the ab variation again. On my lower body days, I like to stick to ab variations. On my upper body days, I like to hit oblique variations, just so I'm hitting my core from all different angles because in my personal opinion, the deadlift and the squat are more core exercises than they are back or leg exercises. Most time when I fail at a deadlift or a squat, it's because my core broke, so that's why you see, and you're going to see, all kinds of ab stuff and oblique stuff all throughout this workout. Again, you're going 1A to 1B to 1C to 1D, which is rest. Your abs start at the rest, because again, it doesn't take that much from you, and then you take 90 seconds rest. This entire secondary giant set should not take you more than 30 minutes. So from the beginning, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, after you're done, your main mover for the day, your secondary or your kind of backup movement for the day that's working your weak point, then you move on to your assistance giant set or your AGS. For me personally, I'm gonna hit the reverse hyper because of, because reverse hypers are awesome. So I'm gonna hit those because that's gonna build up my posterior chain, my glute ham raise, which is gonna be building my hamstrings and my lower back. And then I'm gonna hit rows to build my upper back and my lats. All of these are super important for the deadlift. You don't really need to worry so much about weight on these. You're just trying to burn out the muscle and finish up your workout. Now, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. This should probably take you no more than 10 or 15 minutes. And I would leave 10 extra minutes for conditioning, can you see that? Yeah. 10 minutes of hard conditioning. Conditioning is super important for no other reason than it's hard, it builds your mindset, it's gonna make you great. If you need ideas for conditioning, just go to my website, neverstate.com. I put out a free daily workout every single day. There are literally hundreds of workouts on there and every single one has something to do with conditioning. Just go on, pick something that you hate, look at it. If it looks horrible, do it, get it done in 10 minutes. Get your conditioning done, man. Be a better person, get your life together. Day two. All right, day two. The magic of YouTube again. Wait, day two's not deadlift, dummy. There we go, that's better. Day two is bench because I know how much you guys love bench. So this is gonna be more of the traditional antagonistic muscle group moving in the same plane. So since we're doing a horizontal plane, we're looking at the barbell row to a bench press to oblique variation. Like I said, on lower body days, I stick to ab variations. On upper body days, I stick to obliques. So then I hit 90 seconds rest. Again, I'm going 1A to 1B to 1C to 1D, writing it down a logbook, manipulating weight on the barbell and getting right back after it. This should not take you more than 30 minutes. Tearing down, since this whole workout is built around the bench, I threw in close grip bench, but you guys can do dumbbell bench, you can do incline bench, you can do whatever you want, just get something done. 
and it should closely mimic your bench press. So don't throw in something wild here that makes absolutely no sense, not hitting the same muscle groups. Closely mimics, works the weak point for me on my bench. One of my weak points is my triceps. That's why I went with close grip bench. So after your main giant set, you move on to the secondary giant set. You're hitting another row. You need to hit rows of all variations all the time, every day. Row your face off. If your row goes up, everything goes up. So that's why you see me hitting barbell row here, down here. I switched it up to a dumbbell row. Then the close grip bench, back to an oblique and 90 seconds rest. And you're gonna roll through this for as many prescribed reps and sets as needed, which we're getting to in a minute, so calm down. And then after that, we move down to your assistance giant set, where again, you're hitting those little smaller muscle groups that are necessary to make your bench go up, but you really don't feel like spending a lot of time on it. Don't worry so much about weight, just get it done. It's like doing homework. It doesn't seem like it matters at all until the test comes. And if you did your homework and you prepared, you passed the test. If you didn't, you don't. Kind of like me at nationals. Anyway, the assistance giant set for me is gonna consist of dips to a tricep extension to some sort of explosive push up. But again, as long as you're hitting the same muscle groups as you've been working on the entire day, then you are completely fine. Hit whatever the heck you want, just work hard. And of course, after you're done all of this, you're looking at 10 minutes conditioning. I think it is going to be super important, at least for me. A lot of people go to the gym and they can't work out like this because going to the gym is a social experiment for them. It is not for me. I don't have social skills and I don't have any friends that really like me. So when I run through stuff like this, I am hit the door, hit the door? I'm in the door and out the door within an hour 15, an hour 30 for the entire workout. If you want to take a little bit longer, that's fine. If you don't have that much time, just cut out the assistance giant set since it's tiered. You really, this is important, but it's not as important as this. And this is important, but it's not as important as this. So on the days when you feel like you don't have it, just come in and hit your main giant set. If you have a little more time and you start feeling a little better, move on to your secondary giant set and your sister giant set and so on. Do whatever you want, but get more work done in a short amount of time. If you wanna to talk to your buddy about how your date went Friday or what you're doing for dinner after, this may not work out for you. This program is intended for serious people who wanna move serious weight and make serious gains in a short amount of time. If that does not describe you, I don't know what you're doing. Plus, the giant sets are gonna build up your conditioning without actually having to work it, and it's gonna cut down your body fat, which I know a lot of you do not care about body fat and what you look like. But I'm willing to bet most of you, when you go out to the beach on vacation, you'd rather walk out with a six pack than a beer gut. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. And Giant Sets will help you do that. It may take you two or three weeks to kind of adapt to it. Your weights may take a little dip at the very beginning, but they'll bounce right back, people. It's not that hard. It's just like doing anything new. Everything's hard at first. Riding a bike was hard at first, but you get it. You work at it, and if you're willing to put in the time and the effort, this is gonna work out for you. Let's go to day three. All right, lady and gentlemen. Yeah, I think I have that one woman who watches, and that's probably my mom. Anyway, day three is gonna be your squat. Now, I know a lot of people sense, uh, for most people, the squat is a quad dominant exercise. A lot of people are saying, why don't we do something hamstring related since we are doing the antagonistic muscle group. However, I try to keep most of my hamstring stuff on my deadlift day, and I try to keep most of my quad-ish stuff on my squat day. So what I like to do in place of the antagonistic muscle group or mover is an explosive jump. So it might be a box jump or a broad jump, something again to get my hips and my legs moving as explosively as possible. You never wanna move slow. Moving slow is for old people. Sorry, old people. So I'm gonna hit an explosive jump to a squat to an ab variation because we're back to abs since it's lower body day, 90 seconds rest. I'm gonna roll through this for as many reps and sets as is prescribed for the day, which we're getting to. I'm telling you, I'm sorry, it's taking a while. Then we move on to our secondary giant set, uh, which for my squat, I'm going to use the front squat as my main assistance movement. The front squat is awesome for building up my quads, my core, everything. The front squat is amazing. So I'm gonna do another explosive jump to a front squat, add variation, nine seconds rest. 30 minutes here, moving on, 30 minutes here, and then I go down to the assistance giant set, where I might hit some unilateral leg work, something like a Bulgarian split squat or a walking lunge or something along those lines. I'm back to the glute ham raise because you really can't do enough glute ham raises. And then finally the good morning because a lot of times my squat ends up more like a good morning than I'd like, so it might as well be strong. Good mornings are awesome though, you should do them. That's the basic idea of day three. Questions, good. I can't hear you, man, stop asking. Day four. And on to day four, which is gonna be your overhead press day. Now. 
I'm pretty decent at pull-ups, so that's why I put weighted pull-ups up here. If pull-ups, pulling up your body weight is hard for you, then put pull-ups up here, because you're trying to do the antagonistic muscle group in the same plane, since we're working in a vertical plane, that's why you're shooting for the weighted pull-up or regular pull-up to overhead press. Now, whether you want to do leg drive, not leg drive, different implements, it doesn't really matter, because as you work down, we're gonna talk about that. So I've got a weighted pull-up to an overhead press to oblique in 90 seconds rest. That is my main giant set for the day hitting my main muscle movers and the overhead press when it's built around. Since that is the case, I'm going to further isolate the shoulder group here with a Z press. Let's just say that this was a strict press, it's just as overhead press, and you guys lose your mind when I call a push press or a jerk at overhead press. So, we're gonna say that this is a strict press, so I'm gonna further dial it down, more further isolate to the Z press. Now here I wrote wide grip pull up because again, that's easy for me. If pull ups are hard for you, put the pull ups up here and I probably switch that to something like an inverted row or some type of high pull. After that, so I went wide grip pull ups to Z press to the oblique in 90 seconds rest. Again, as many reps and sets as prescribed. And then for my assistant shine set, we're just gonna blow through it, finish off shoulders. I put an auto press just cause I just wrote auto press. I don't really know. It, anything that's going to even further isolate that muscle group to lat raises to a rear delt fly or a face pull, something like that, hitting all areas of the shoulder. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, 10 minutes hard conditioning, people. Come on, don't skip the conditioning. So now you guys have the basic idea. Now, again, your assistance exercise may change from month to month, week to week, whatever, how you want to set it up. That's not a big deal. And I just gave you example exercises. I'm not saying go through and do this every single day, these exact exercises. I'm just giving you guys examples. I don't have the time to actually lay out everything like that for you guys. But you guys should have the basic idea of the template that you're gonna be following every single day. So now you have the principles of the program and you have the template of what every single workout is gonna look like. Now you just need to plug in what exercise you want and now we're gonna move on to the actual linear progression part of this linear progression video. All right, so now we're gonna break down what actual reps and sets you're doing. For your first month, your first four weeks, weeks one through four, you're gonna hit four sets of eight. This is gonna help you build some strength, some size, and muscular endurance. Especially when you start throwing four sets of eight in a giant set format, you're gonna be sucking wind. It's gonna take you a little bit. Like I said, two, three weeks before your body catches up, but trust me, you'll be okay. Months, month two, weeks five through eight, you're gonna move on to five sets of five, and month three, weeks nine through 12, you're gonna do 10 sets of three. So what I'm going to do is you guys understand the basic principles, you guys understand the template for how the workout is going to go every single time. Now I'm going to talk to you about the actual progression that you can kind of expect. Now I'm going to use really basic numbers here and I'm just going to make five pound jumps every week. Since we're doing ramping sets, you can make as big of a jump as you want, but with the ramping sets, remember to keep at least one or two reps in the hole. Because if you go to, let's say you're doing your five by five week, and you're on your fourth set, and you're eking out rep three, four, five, the next week's not gonna go very well for you. So whatever your top set is for the day, make sure that, I'll just drop that, you're welcome. Whatever your top set is, just make sure that you probably could have gotten one, maybe two more reps in there. So, we're gonna use, for the example, very basic numbers. Let's say week one of the four sets of eight, you're gonna come in and you're gonna hit 100 pounds for your top set. So on your last set of eight here, you hit 100 pounds, congratulations. You better be above 100 pounds, or else. Anyway, you hit four sets of eight at 100 pounds. Week two, all you're trying to do is beat the best number from week one. So your last set was four sets of eight at 100 pounds. Week two, try to hit 105. Then week three, try to hit 110. Week four, hit 115. This goes on for all the exercises, everything. You just run through, just like that, for your first four weeks. So you have an entire month of continually trying to beat this. Let's say on week four, like I said, you got 115 for eight reps. If you can get 115 for eight reps, since we're dropping down the next month to five sets of five, I'm going to safely assume that if you got 115 for eight, you can hit 130 for five, I hope. Anyway, so now we're on five sets of five. On your fifth week, let's say you started at 130, making five pound jumps again. And again, if you can do more than five pound jumps, do more than five pound jumps, as long as you're keeping a couple reps in the tank when you go. Week six, we jumped to 135. On week seven, you went to 140. In week eight, you finished at 145. That was your top set of the month. You did five reps at 145 pounds. So if you can do that, if you can hit 145 for five, we're 
gonna go ahead and assume again that you can hit 160 for three. You're taking two reps off, I'm assuming you can do a little bit more weight for less. So, week nine, we start at 160. Week 10, we go to 165. Week 11 is 170. Week 12 is 175. Making very little jumps here. Most likely, you're gonna make more than five pound jumps. Typically, on upper body movements, I like to go for at least five pound jumps and a lower body at least 10. In reality, I really actually try to go for 10 pound jumps on upper body and 20 pound jumps lower body. But do with that what you will. And it is time to assume again, if you can do 175 for three, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you're above 100 pounds. So when you're down here, if you've done the full month of 10 sets of three, your body's gonna be a little bit beat up. You're gonna need a little bit of break. So all you do is take and go right back up to the top and start doing four sets of eight again. That's gonna give your body a little bit of time to recover and rebuild. Your CNS gonna get a break, your brain's gonna get a break, and you're gonna start driving up that conditioning and trying to put on mass again. But like I said, if you finished at 175 for three, we're gonna assume that you gained some strength over three months. That is going to be a good assumption if you're actually putting the work in. So instead of starting at 100 here, let's just say you could do 130. And then week two, you go 135, week three is 140, and you continue to make five pound jumps. That means in a three month span, you got 30 pounds stronger. Since it is a three month program, that means you can run it four times a year, and over the course of a year, Three, 30 pounds times four is 120 pounds. If you could make 120 pounds gain in a year to a main lift, that's awesome. All right guys, so that is a super basic way that I program linear progression. Hopefully it wasn't too tedious or boring for you guys, but I find this type of training extremely motivating. Right now, I do more rotating percentages and conjugate stuff, but there's at least three months out of the year where I train exactly like this. Because as long as I have a number that I need to beat in my head before I come to the gym, I find that extremely motivating. So if I know that last week I got 100 for eight, Shooting for 105 gives me something to strive for and it's almost like going for a PR every single workout. And I don't know about you guys, but going for PRs is the main reason why I walk into the gym. PRs are fun. So all of you that watch my lifting journey video and ask me questions about this, hopefully this answers them. Hopefully it wasn't boring or too tedious. I really do appreciate you guys watching and I really wanted to thank you guys because I was pretty down after nationals. I was super disappointed. It really didn't go the way that I wanted to. But you guys reaching out, being positive, being supportive, all the awesome comments you guys left me from that last video about my national experience, it just means so much to me. I thank you guys so much. I've gotten a little more perspective now that I'm further and further away from the event and I'm looking at it more and more positively, but I really couldn't have gotten there without all of your help. Thank you guys so much, really. And in a little bit of self-promotion, if you guys want me to lay out a program for you, all the reps, all the sets, all the exercises, lay absolutely everything out for you. I do sell online personalized programs. I do linear progression, conjugate, rotating percentages, my own programming. Every single one is written by me. What happens is you send me an email at neversate at gmail.com. There you go, should be up here. Neversate at gmail.com. I send you back a list of questions so I can personalize the program to you talking about your goals, your medical history, your equipment access, and then I write a program especially for you. I thank you guys very much. I know a lot of you have bought programs for me. I hope you guys like them. I know a lot of you are doing really great things with them, but that is probably my main source of income right now. So I thank you guys so much for doing that. And if you are interested in doing that, I'm not trying to push it on you. It's not a big deal, but I want to get have the option. Thanks. And finally, some other cool things are coming up. I am going to have the bench press part two video out early next week. I know it's been a little bit, but being away at Nationals, I was away from my business, all my online personal training, all my online programs. I've been catching up with those all week doing the Nationals video. There's been a lot going on, so I'm finally caught up. I'm kind of getting ready to do that. So I'm going to tape that probably this weekend or early next week. Should have it out to you guys probably Tuesday at the latest. So if you're waiting on Bench Press Part 2, it's coming. It's going to be good. And also, next week, we're going to make a 400-pound stone. It is going to be 400 pounds. My buddy melted down a bunch of lead into a very super heavy condensed insert that I can stick into the stone. So it's gonna end up being 400 pounds. If it is not 400 pounds, I quit. I'm done, done forever. It's gonna be 400 pounds. But as soon as that is done, I am gonna do the gym tour video, which I know a lot of you have been waiting for. There's not a whole lot to tour. It's a very small place, but I do have a lot of equipment. So I'm gonna show you guys, talk you through it, show you everything that I have. Hopefully you guys find it entertaining. Anyway, as always, I do really thank you guys for watching. Until I catch up with you next week, do something amazing with your lives. Keep working hard. Be nice to each other, people. And I will see you then.